So what I what I thought I would do um, today, I didn't know um, the tenants is a lot lower than I thought it would be, but I thought we'd at least talk through some of the ideas that we had from, um, I'd say we the last time we had like a real meeting was probably the middle of, or the end of September, right? Before a lot of the conferences and events started kind of taking away a lot more time from people. So um, these items over here on the left were the things that we had talked about, um, you know, kind of network extensions for network policy for CNI, um, maybe looking at like extensions for like routes within cloud native um, specific capabilities that are maybe above the CNI layer. Um, we had kind of talked about, you know, you have the interface and you have sort of things above that interface and routes seem to fit that category and other things might fit that category as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about server load balancing, IPv6, uh, DNS, uh, service chaining slash sharing of, you know, how you kind of, when you discover these services, how do you sort of define network services and how they can work together? Um, especially if there's like a dependency need there. And then um, things like, you know, service mesh and network observability were topics that we, we touched on as things that really hadn't been defined very clearly for, um, for cloud native um, use cases. So I kind of thought we'd start with these items and then, you know, we can add other items to this if we wanted to, or we could just sort of start with, you know, trying to, um, you know, at the next meeting, maybe taking a couple of these and trying to define what um, what we'd want to do within within our environment, you know, within this work group yeah. to address these. There's a few others, you know. Um, the lands in the, the, um, yeah, so in the serverless workspace, we came up with kind of a landscape for serverless, and I didn't know if, yeah. like within the network, land, within our cloud, native landscape today, we have networking as a category, but I don't know if that's really the way we want to define the network for cloud native, right? It's sort of a bunch of network vendors right now, you know, and their projects in there. Um, so I, I, this is just like a question. I don't know, I'm not saying we have to do something there, but something I thought about was sort of looking at network from different areas, kind of like serverless did. And then, um, you know, we also did like a white paper and so let's kind of talk about what that means in terms of cloud native. And I don't know if it makes sense to have a white paper, a set of white papers around networking and cloud native and what that means. Yeah, I, uh, I'm enthused by both of, by nearly all of these uh, to help brainstorm a bit and reinforce um, the network landscape. Um, it had been I just popped the link over in Zoom and it's it had been maybe 18 months or so, about a year and a half ago or more, um, uh, that the CNCF staff had asked uh, for me to put together a perspective on, at the time it was container networking and it was to help facilitate um, a panel um, at, uh, I think it was ONIF, a panel there. Mm -hmm. and and part of that was I actually called out the, the cloud native landscape at the time. Um, uh, and yeah, I think that was pre um, serverless landscape. It was pre sort of sub landscape, if you will, mm -hmm. like the serverless one. Um, right. And to make it simple and based on the time that I had had, I tried to characterize and contrast um, four prominent projects, um, at, at least, at least you know, back then. And it was, um, yeah, to help, at the time, it was to help facilitate a discussion and a panel. And, um, but, but just brainstorming out loud about the possibility of a, net, you know, like a, a networking landscape. Right. Um, yeah, it, it, actually, if you think about that landscape, actually, if, if a landscape was defined, it might actually even help um, describe some of the other cards that you have there. Um, right. uh, because you can imagine it in a networking landscape, if, We've got categories here, you know, right now it's application and application definition and development, orchestration and management on this landscape, but for a networking one, it might be security, observability, uh, management, um, routing, you know, server load balancing, routing, you know, the, it might be API gateways, it might be, because network as a term and as a space covers 
it, it, uh, in some respects, unfortunately, like, well, I guess I was going to say it covers some of the same things that are on, like the, the ones that are highlighted actually are, no, no, not, not all, but, but there's many that are networking related on this landscape, even this old version here. Right. So we, we certainly would list some of the same projects there. Um, I don't think that that hurts. Even, I think, even that I think kind of helps, right? Because it shows, it kind of shows what's in scope for our work group versus what's covered by other areas, you know? Yeah, right. Right. And I'm also thinking about this from the standpoint of, you know, with, um, with Kubernetes having SIGs now and they have a network SIG, I was kind of thinking of, you know, what, the, what's our purpose in this ecosystem? Why right? are we doing the same thing as a Kubernetes SIG? Should we join forces with them? And, and the more I thought about it, the more I thought about, you know, what, you know, the Kubernetes SIG is very focused on Kubernetes and we're supposed to be more focused on the cloud native landscape principles of what what it means to go towards cloud native right and from a user standpoint i think um and so i kind of thought you know maybe we you know we we highlight where the kubernetes sig fits into this but we don't try to address any of the things that they're trying to address or we maybe have requirements that we have to submit to that sig to address some of the needs from the user community right i agree i agree i agree that in the past they've been confusing when people have raised it up that um, the the challenge, I, from my perspective, in responding to that question was that it was undeniable that the net, the Kubernetes networking SIG was a greater center of gravity than than this working group um, was and or is. I think that we can. I think with organization like this and discussion, I think we can um, change some of that. Um, and to your point, like yeah, hey. It, uh, there are things, there are concerns and, and areas to address that are well beyond Kubernetes and um, things that are, um, you know, certainly of concern to <clears throat> to end users and to vendors. Um, this, you know, between hi hybrid things, workloads, you know, Kubernetes on-prem, Kubernetes run, running as a service, how do you, the networking between those, the, the, the there's a number of, um, like, like ingress controllers is kind of a, a good example. Like it's something that certainly that Kubernetes focuses on in terms of their networking SIG, but um, there's a number of projects within there. Um, how do those relate to each other? Maybe they should be laid out on a landscape. Um, you know, something of, uh, it, it's been interesting to reflect on why a project like Envoy took off um, as well as it has in comparison to something like Nginx or Traffic. Right. And there's a couple of, and it's not that we need to go um, uh, get into politics. No, that's not the point. The, the point being like highlighting here's, here's, here's why this, here's where the cloud native aspect of this project um, has helped it see much more adoption in these environments. And I think a white paper that discusses some of that is, is of interest. Um, I'd recently, recently put out a report through O'Reilly uh, on service mesh and some of what I'm talking about was spoken to in there. Uh, I, I think, I, I, yeah, it's, it's kind of fun. It's kind of interesting because th th this working group like it could have so much this to discuss um, of these of these topics. I mean, do, do you know, so core DNS as an example, um, I'm assuming that, that I haven't been involved in that group, but I'm assuming that they've got some other community where they meet with them. Um, but I mean, maybe, maybe that, sorry, I'm just ripping here, but maybe that's a card to put on here is, is that potentially, like you'd said, going over to the Kubernetes SIG and either submitting some things to them or actually going over to those other projects like Core DNS or um, Envoy or uh, Istio or, you know, or type it, um, what Calico and et cetera. And we've had a couple of them present, but maybe maybe one of the themes, one of the backlog items is something of a regular cadence of the presentations from them and kind of where they're going. Um, yeah, I was thinking about that too. That's a good way to, I, I didn't have a way to define it. That's, I think it's a perfect way to define it. Um, it's, I think the value to them is, you know, is feedback, exposure. I mean, conceptually, if there were enough folks that were attending this working these working group meetings, 
I think it would be valuable to them, the exposure to feedback that I think so too. And I think once once the um like the, the end user community is getting a little bit more um it's, it's getting a regular meeting cadence, it's not gonna present to them in an upcoming event, you know, a meeting to kind of say, Hey, we yeah. here's some of the work groups we have today, we'd love participation from the end user community and, and things that you're trying to solve or problems you're fight you're facing in the network area. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, we, we have from Mastercard standpoint, we have several things I I was gonna you know bring up, but I'm sure that there's other other industries with other issues and, and concerns they're trying to solve. I want to reflect for a moment and give ourselves some credit uh, with respect to to trying to help the industry address uh, one thing pop, pop, pops to mind: addresses some serious contention around the adoption of CNI uh, between Swarm and Kubernetes back when that was, you know, back when that war was raging. Um, and so, yeah, this is an excellent um, vendor neutral forum for, you know, for this discussion. Um, yeah, I th think there's, uh, I, yeah. And it's, it's interesting in the certain you know, when we when we collaborated on the, the serverless white paper and we you know part of it was like defining what is serverless I mean what, what does that mean um, interestingly and I don't blame anyone for it but the service mesh as a buzzword you know every, everyone wants to well most want to rub a bit of that buzzword love on their project and their project may or may not actually be a service mesh right. So in, in a white paper, you know, maybe suggesting or writing it down in the description of sort of qualifications of what it, what it is to be. The, the, I am concerned, I'm interested, I'm very pleased to see that you're, you're doing this. With, uh, I'm happy we're having this discussion because I'm concerned that as we go to define, as we go to reform working groups and define SIGs, that the, the question of what, what SIGs should be created and the reflection of how active or inactive this group has been. Right. People might suggest, well, well, hey, no one cares about networking. But the, the, the fact of the matter is, there's a suggestion that there's an observability SIG as like an example of when to be created. It's like, well, look, anymore in, in uh, cloud native land in this distributed systems environment, observability, half of that is about the network. The other half is, you know, in-app, APM. So I think that there's so many things that we could be discussing within here and, and observability being you know, or, or a portion of observability, certainly being one of them. Security is another set of, is a, whole, is a genre of uh, topics that might be a backlog item. I don't know that, you know, so Tidera and Calico, is some of the things they've wrapped around it, is, you know, how they've hooked in with Kubernetes uh, security policy, and, and I don't know that they've ever spoken to that in depth, or some of the other projects, Apparetto, um, some of the other CNCF Silver members that you know that they're good ones to also go to and um, you know have have them have them point to some of the things that they're doing. Right. I, I mentioned them because they're Apparato security centric as well. Right. No, yeah, definitely. And I, I um, I thought about adding some of the. I don't know if I put network security. I think I, I thought about putting network security. I'll add that. It's, you know, these days are so tied together. Yeah. It's hard to kind of, you know, separate them out. And they've been looking, like you said, you know, with the observability point, they've been thinking about the same thing with the security or the safe work group, right? And uh, you know, yeah. I think there's there's some overlap things there that we should be kind of careful not to um, to move into because it's, you don't want to have too many work groups trying to address the problem from different angles, right? You want to kind of sort of identify where it belongs and stick it yeah. in the right place. Yeah, totally. I like how you I kind of moved this cloud native, just so you know, before we continue, you know, um, brainstorming, I moved this cloud native landscape over to our current um, current sprint, because I think if we define that that landscape and those, those categories up front, that'll help with sort of where we put these other items and what we do with them, so. That makes a lot of sense, yeah. I like how you qualified security as network security to your point about uh, safe and other, you know, how you 
uh, networking capability. Yeah. I don't think you were able to make the meeting, um, Lee, but we talked with, um, you know, um, I can't remember the guy's name, the guy from Cisco that's doing the network service mesh yeah. stuff. Ed, uh, is it Ed? Ed, yeah, Ed, Ed Wonky, yeah. So I, we talked with Ed and, um, you know, they're, they're kind of going down, I guess, the, um, I forgot which standards body, them. they're trying to go down like a standards body approach with that. And so they didn't seem interested in like, you know, putting that into the, the cloud native landscape and it's so specialized for like service providers. I don't really know if it would be a good fit and since we're more focusing on cloud native users, I believe, than network providers, right? So we yeah. kind of left that off, but we can definitely open that back up to discussion as well as, as the year goes on and get updates at least from them on nothing else, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, updates would be nice because it may be the case that there are some faucets of what they're doing that are, yeah, the service provider land is, uh, yeah, I mean, I was, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm telling you things that you know, but yeah, significantly different or can be from enterprise land and, and um, you know, much of, yeah, much of the focus in CNCF has been uh, enterprise end user oriented. Right. It is, and this is one of those things that they, yeah, so, they, so they've got network service mesh.io as their landing page to discuss it. Um, I actually thought that, that that program was somewhat represented in a different Linux Foundation group, like the, um, um, what, FDIO, or I thought that they were, uh, or, or the uh, Open Networking Front, what is it, the ONIF? I, th I thought they were already sort of friendly with the different um, Linux Foundation subgroups. Yeah. yeah, I think they are too. And they had, if you remember from like, um, were you at um, KubeCon? I know, yeah, you were there. We just couldn't catch up with each other. They um, had their own little like work stream yeah, across absolutely. the street in that building, right? Where they were doing sort of a bunch of of um, sessions on network service mesh and, and uh, ONIF yeah. aspects, right? So. Hmm. Um, but yeah, Ed, Ed is actually here in you know, Austin. He keeps uh, keeps asking to go to, uh, and I keep uh, wanting to, but, but not making it. There's uh, some axe throwing, axe throwing that happens here in Austin. So he's <laughs> <laughs> collection of folks. Yeah, I can. I would not want to be near Ed throwing axes. I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> or, or get him excited talking about uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he uses his hands quite a bit when he talks, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I, figured, uh, I figured I'd do this. Um, Anita, Anita, if you're on the call and you're, you're able to, um, you know, if we're just kind of in brainstorming mode here, so if you've got um, comments or thoughts about some of the uh, topics that have been suggested. And so Anita, I don't know if you can hear. Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah I can hear you. Hi. Um, I'm I actually, I work for a company called RxM. We're a training and a consulting firm. And I'm a little bit more of an operationals person. Um, but we did notice that, um, you know, we were, we're trying to be really active and participate in a lot of the groups, uh, which is why I'm sitting on here. Uh, some of the more technical guys are doing a little bit of working, but I was just hoping to get, like, gather some notes. Um, you know. Yeah get word back to them yeah but i i would be happy to see if they had any feedback um that i could send along your guys this way as well sure. i mean actually yeah yeah i don't know uh, ken i don't know if this resonates with you or not but but i needed the i think in part what ken was describing uh previously in and around the white paper or or one or more white papers was a bit of um, best practices and guidance um toward um Toward operations of cloud native networks or networks running cloud native workloads, uh, it may be that yeah, maybe it's some of your guys' expertise or or questions um, might be well placed within there. Um, so that's uh, yeah, definitely. Another thing I thought about when you were saying that Anita is that the um, you know we have a couple of like 
Kubernetes certifications that the Linux Foundation has been doing. And, um, and I'm sure, you know, Cisco's already added to the, you know, CC and P and CTIE, some, some cloud things, right? But I'm kind of, you know, been thinking longer term, you know, with this work group, what sort of um, changes would we want to add to the training, to training areas for kind of what the network, because I know, you know, here at MasterCard, we have a lot of really strong networking um, admins, right? But as you move towards cloud native, that their skill set needs have greatly changed, right? And so, you know, kind of identify what those changes are. It's something that might be interesting for this work group to say, you know, whether it's in a white paper or if it's in, you know, something more formal like the certification work that the Linux Foundation is doing around Kubernetes. I think having some some information about networking in, in this new cloud native world makes a lot of sense. And then I need to maybe, if you could either say it again or, or, um, or but the, the, uh, the, the organization that you're with, you said it. Oh, I'm oh, sorry, RXM. Oh, okay, oh, right, okay. Yeah, we're a, a silver level member, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I guess I need it since I forced you to come off mute. Uh, maybe just a couple more minutes, a couple more questions. The, of the workloads that you guys are, are running or of your network oriented teams, like, are there particular ch unaddressed challenges or you know, open, open areas of major concern that are, you know, whether it's security related or, um, or you know, observability monitoring related that plague you guys? That, are you treating the network as you know infrastructure as code, or you know, what, what does it does it look like for you guys? Um, I um, sorry. I guess I realize uh, I just use that term. I'm I'm sitting in a technical group, so I should have thought about. It. I'm more of like an operational, like a oh. like a administrative operational. Oh, so it. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I have like a vague awareness of the space, but I'm not sure that I could speak in a way that's super informative about the kind of um, troubles that the te more technical people are going through, uh, through. But I would be glad if you guys, I'm not sure if I have your guys' emails, but I'd be glad to, to gather some of that feedback and, and pass it along. Oh, yeah, very good. Yeah. Uh... And it was unfair of me to totally put you on the spot on that. It's just Ken and I, so we're, we're okay. So, um, but uh, there, there's my email address there. I, um, I'm generally interested toward trying to help um, Ken uh, outline what it is that, that he thinks that we should be focused on. Uh, yeah, it just, whether it's a description of like the environment that you guys are within and stuff that's causing you pain or things that you think that you've mastered or or maybe you guys have best practices you've come up with already or, um, yeah i popped over a link to a, a free tool that my group um, at SolarWinds had created and uh as a as something that might uh, be beneficial to you or, or might not but feedback either way would be interesting Um, can uh, uh, here's another another thought. I think to, to to the extent that it's just the three of us, um, I'll pop over a link as well um, to speak of that that'll explain a little bit more about um, the project that I messaged in email. You know, the, the earlier one that we were talking about. Yeah, I've heard about mastery. Okay. Um, I'm not sure where I heard about that, but I heard about that. So yeah. Um, but uh, uh, it's not in a it's a it's in a premature state. I think we we you know the the um, I figured I'd pop over a link just as we were talking about kind of you know free tools and that, that's the intention behind it is to help educate people and also help answer like the most popular question like the question that I for sure get um, and I've gotten, I've given like five service mesh workshops um, this year, you know, KubeCon, the Docker cons, the velocities, the, um, every time somebody raises their hand and it's like, Hey, so that's really neat. And the service mesh provides a lot of value. Um, what, 
what's the cost? Like you don't get any, you don't get all this for free. What's the overhead of running something on the mesh? And Envoy, and it's kind of, I think the question is asked at two layers, the, the control plane and, and at the data plane. I think most people are thinking about the data plane and having to process all of those packets. Um, and Envoy being the most prominent um, proxy there that's processing all these packets. It, the Envoy project itself, their documentation says we don't publish performance statistics because it's a subject or it can be a hard thing to because it, because it's you, you've got to couch it within this environment at this time, running on this hardware, run, using this application, using, um, but it's still just an open question. People have the question, and 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 uh, so I was considering um, you know working toward the, the meshery uh, to help provide something of a, a tool that the industry can go to to do to run across different meshes and uh, help them. You know, more than just producing reports, maybe help them uh, load test their particular deployment or benchmark when they've done a deployment, if it's, if it's okay, if it's good, if it's matching with others, maybe, um, you know, get some, potentially people want to send in their reports to then have an anonymized, uh, you know, collection of information that says, you know, here's, here's the average speed by which you know, the average overhead of the different deployments and things, things like this. Kind of the, the thoughts behind that. But. And so. But I guess then, you know, Ken, going back to the Cloud native uh, network landscape, but that makes perfect sense to me as like the, the starting point for trying to define yeah. the, the categories. I thought about throwing like the white paper over there, but I think we'll start with just the landscape to kind of define the categories and then, you know, it makes sense where we want to do a white paper at, right? So kind of have that drive the next steps for us. Seems like the right first step. So. Yeah. So I would document this up. I'll try to create like a blank template for that with some thoughts in it and then um, send that out today or tomorrow to the work group um, email list. Oh, nice. Okay. The, uh, you know, and hopefully you're on that list. If you're not, um, you know, you um, hopefully you'll be able to join, join that list and um, or some of your companies on that list from, from the team. And then we can, Definitely would be looking for feedback over the next couple of weeks before we meet again in, in two weeks. Um, I think we meet every uh, two weeks. I'm not sure. I'm on the list, but I'll double check. Yeah, I'll double check with Taylor. Sure. Um, and can and if not, you can just have your guys send us thoughts on, on our landscape categories that would make sense from their standpoint, you know? Definitely. And, uh, and Ken, I, I'm pretty sure you, you know this already, but the um, uh, the land, yeah, the, the current landscape is at, at, you know the interactive one is now you know it's an open source project and, and one that can be forked and, and uh, right. Yeah. Yep. Um, hmm. Yeah, it's definitely something I plan on doing if once we get some traction behind this. Yeah. I don't know why it's, I keep changing that default, but it doesn't ever change. All right. Okay, well, thanks for joining today. So I um, try to want more of us um, joining, but I'll, I guess I'll send out this in email today and, and announce the next meeting and I'll remind everyone a few days before it. And we'll try to take this to maybe GitHub um, to kind of document and discuss you know, a network landscape and do it kind of in the public domain. That way it has, you know, more visibility on it from the overall CNCF community. Yeah. I mean, we may garner some additional interest. So it's the 20, 29th is our next one then? The... Correct. Okay. Yeah. And if, if that's too soon, then um, we definitely can, um, you know, post, you know, kind of postpone that meeting to have a presentation from the community and then come back to this, you know, in a month, so it's no huge rush on my side. Okay.
I, uh, I'm glad for the pressure. I, I want the project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're like me. In order to get anything done in a large enterprise, you have to kind of put dates out there that pressure it to get done. Otherwise, it just keeps getting pushed off. Yeah. <laughs> the urgent always takes over the strategic. <laughs> <laughs> Let's plan to be tactical. Let's strategize on being tactical. <laughs> All right, cool. You guys have a great rest of your days. Take care. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.